Hi, Yarn of Bees. How are you today? Today is the 1st of July. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. <laughs> but today is the 12th project collab that I am doing with Jeanette at Miss Hooty Hootenin's Crafts and I thought I would do something a little different. Usually I'm doing like a, a tutorials on stuff to make or um, you know something yarny related. Well today I want to do something a bit different. It is yarny related but it's not with yarn. So for those of you out there that make um, project keepers or uh, stitch markers or jewelry or anything like that, we're, we've got something for you. So, and if you have ever thought about making stitch markers, uh, this is the video that you are going to want to watch. All right, so what I oh by the way go to Jeanette's channel and see what she does we we alternate months so I started in January she did February I did March you know so on and so on well this is my month <laughs> so but go check out what she's been doing she did a fantastic to um pattern for dinosaur for the last one so yeah oh Ooh, ooh. Hi Jeanette. <laughs> I have my little owl that's sitting here. Okay, let's get started. What I did was I collected things that I knew that you could probably get at Michael's or stuff that you had at home. All right, uh, so let's get started. I'm going to just put this aside. Okay. So first off, what you're going to need is something to wrap your wire around. Okay, if you're... Um, I'm going to make a progress keeper first, okay? I'm not a knitter, but I know that there's a lot of knitters out there. So I figured let's do a progress keeper first and then we'll do a stitch marker. This is really easy, guys. This is not hard. Um, anybody can do this. Uh, it's pretty beginner friendly. Okay. All right. So you're going to get either like a Sharpie or I have a 15 millimeter crochet hook, something that's round. Okay. That's not too big. This is about the biggest I would go. Okay. This is a paper towel holder. Okay. Something that's round, that's long, that's not variegated size, something that's consistent in its size. Okay. Um, a wooden spoon would work. Actually, that would be perfect, but I don't have any wooden spoons right now. So yeah, so let's try to use this crochet hook. Um, you can go down to like a 12 millimeter hook, um, something like that, if you'd like but you are going to want it to be a little bit bigger so that you have room to play with the wire. All right. Then what you're going to need is the wire. Okay, you can pick this up at Michael's. It's an 18 gauge wire. Okay. You can go to a, um, a 16 gauge, but then it's going to be really hard for you to work with. So I think that an 18 gauge wire is perfect. Um, it, just make sure that it's hard wire. You can get wire that is really flexy and you don't want that. Okay, so you're going to need that. Then you're going to need some jump rings. Okay. Alright, some you can get these at Michael's as well. And these are, they're like split rings. Okay. So you're going to need that. Then you're going to need some eye pins. Okay. Oops. 
Now these have a little head on the end of them. You can see that right there. That's to stop your bead. Okay, so make sure that their eye pin or their head head pins, not eye pins. Sorry, head pins. Um, eye pins are different. Eye pins have a loop at the end, so you need head pins. Unless you want to do eye pins, and then you can hang something off the eye pin. Okay, so you're going to need some of that. Uh, then you're going to need some beads. Okay, now I picked these ones up at Michael's. Most of us know this um, brand. I just picked these up just, you know, something a little different. You don't have to do something like this. You can do something like this. This is one that I made earlier. Oop. Okay. So you don't have to get too fancy. Um, for the um, stitch marker, wow, brain fart, <laughs> you're going to need a lever back hook. Okay. Okay. Now the tools. Now, I've got most a whole bunch of tools for making jewelry and stuff, but you don't need a lot. Needle nose pliers. Okay. And these are called flush cutters. All right. You don't need to have these, but um, if you're going to be planning on making a lot of stitch markers and stuff, these are a really good tool to have. And what they do is they cut your wire so that it's like you can get right up, oops, right up close to like if you're trying to cut the wire at a bead or something, it gets right up close to that. And it goes flush up against whatever you're cutting up against. Okay, so these are really good to have. Okay, now this is something that I recently got and you guys have probably seen this in my other video. I gave one of these away. Um, this is like a th two or three in one um, wire cutter. Okay, you don't have to have this. All right, you can do it. I can, I'll show you how to do it old school. <laughs> I guess it's kind of old school um, to make your loops. All right. But I thought I'd show this to you anyways because I just recently put it on a video. Uh, people have been asking me, you know, what it is, what it does. So um, I'm going to show you that. All right. Uh, and that's pretty much all you need. I mean, I have, I have some other tools here just in case these. These are a really cool tool. And you can get these at Michael too as well. You can see this side has this is like a flush of um, like a pointed edge, and this one has a little hook on the end. This is so that if you have your jump rings, right? These pick up your jump rings, and you won't lose it. Okay. You won't, it won't go anywhere. And when you go to open, <clears throat> excuse me, open your jump ring. I don't know if I can do this and get close enough so you can see. Oh, there we go. When you open your jump ring, sometimes when you're trying to open a jump ring, it'll spring out of your uh, pliers. This will stop that from happening. It hooks on, I don't know if you can see it. It really hooks on to the jump ring. So when you're trying to open it, it's not going to, uh, your jump ring isn't going to go flying across the room. Okay. So these are an invaluable tool if you're working a lot with jewelry or jump ring or um, stitch markers. 
Okay, and that's pretty much all you need. All right. Okay, yeah, I think that the one, the most invaluable tools that you can have, just the bare minimum, is your needle nose pliers and your flush cutters. And uh, that's that will get you through pretty much everything that you you need to if you're starting out. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get our wire. Okay, we're going to pull a little bit out. Straighten it out just a little bit by running it through your fingers. Okay. Now you're going to get your, whether it's your wooden spoon or whatever, and you're going to put your wire around. You're going to hold on to it. And you're going to just wrap it around. Now if you're making more than one, this is a great thing to do. You just pull it and keep wrapping. Okay, just get it right up against there and just keep wrapping it around for as many times as you need. Okay. And then we're going to stop there. I'm going to take your flush cutters and see where your wire stops here. You're going to go over to this side and you're going to cut just a little bit longer. Just so that you know that you have a full circle at the end. Okay? And that's that. Just pull it off there. Okay? And now you have a bunch of rings. Okay, now you're going to see your ends right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your cutters and you're going to go on this end. You're going to go in a little bit and you're just going to snip your wires. Just do one at a time. Okay? Now, you have a bunch of rings. There you go. You can do as many of those as you want just by wrapping around your spoon or whatever. And you just Go in between those two ends and just cut right across. Easy peasy. Alright, now what you're going to do is you're going to take your needle nose pliers. Alright, you're going to take one of your rings. Okay, I'm going to try and bring you in a little bit here. There we go. Okay, you're going to take your needle nose pliers you're going to go to the very edge of your needle nose pliers, okay, on the wire. And you're going to turn them outward. Okay. You're just going to twist. Just turn it. You can lift your your pliers up and move it and twist. Just so that oops, sorry just so that it meets with your other side of your wire. Just close that, that loop. That's all you're doing. You're just twisting. Okay. Okay, now you're going to go to the other side. And you're going to do the same thing. Just go in here and twist your wrist. Lift up your pliers a little bit if you have to and twist. Oops. Okay. And just keep going until it's met up with your other wire. 
Now if you go too far, you can just, oops, straighten it out a little bit. Okay. Now you see my wire kind of, it's all cockeyed here. You just take it and pull it back a little bit. Okay. Straighten it out. Okay. You're going to go and you're going to make sure that your wire, <coughs> your wires um, flush with the other wire. You don't want it overlapping at all. Okay. There you go. Okay. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your fingers up against here and you're going to hold it and you're going to lightly squeeze until these two loops are overlapping. Okay. If you go a little bit too far, just pull it out a little bit. Okay? Then you can flatten it out a little bit. Okay? And there's your loop. Alright? You don't have to do it very hard because this wire is very flexible. Alright? And now we're going to do our charm. Okay? All right. So you're going to get your charms. You're going to cut some off here. Okay? You're going to get your charm. You're going to get your head pin. Okay? And just put it in. And there it is. Now sometimes your head pin, the head of your pin, is going to be too small and it's going to come right through the bead. I've had that happen more time, you know, a lot of times. So what you can do is if you want to, if you have a smaller bead, like with this, um, oops, with this set, it comes with smaller beads as well. You can just put that oops, small bead on, and then you can put your other bead on, and it will just stop it from coming off the head pin. All right? Okay. So now you're going to take your three in ones. Now you're going to notice on this side there is a hole. Okay, now you're going to see, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what can I use here? Okay, there's a peg right here. There's a space in here. And then there's the hole over here. So all you're going to do is you're going to take your wire you're going to push it through underneath that peg and you're going to push it through whoops I'm trying to do this in the camera you're going to push it through that hole okay now if you've got a like a weird bead like this you're going to have to turn it okay and you want it to rest up against here okay then all you do is squeeze and it's a very gentle squeeze it will cut the wire and it will bend the wire you just take that piece out okay and it comes right off and it makes your loop for you ta-da isn't that cool okay now the thing with these though is sometimes it doesn't close that hole all the way. So you're going to have to take your needle nose pliers and you're going to have to 
turn it a little bit just to make sure that that is closed. As you can see, see how it's not quite closed. So you're just going to want to tighten this up a little bit. Oops, I'm chasing my ring. <laughs> just going to want to close it up a little bit, just because otherwise it's going to just fall right off your um, project. Okay. There you go. Now, if you don't have a pair of these and you want to do this old school, you take your head pin, you take your bead, put your bead on, take your other bead, put that on. Okay, now what I like to do is I take this finger, hold it here. Okay, take the flush cutters and I will cut right above my finger. Okay, and that gives you enough room to twist your wire. You're going to take your needle nose pliers, pick up your, whoops, <laughs> yeah, okay. Forgot to hold on to the wire here. Okay. You're gonna take your needle nose pliers. You're gonna hold on to the wire. You're gonna bend it away from you. A little bit, just a little bit. Just so that it's The wires just bent a little bit. You see that? And then you're going to turn it towards you. Oh. Okay, take it a little bit, twist your turn your pliers again, grab onto it, turn a little bit, and keep turning it a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, until you get your loop. Oh, come on. It's kind of hard to do with these wings, but <laughs> you get the idea. There we go. I'm going to just try and get the wings out of your way. Okay. And then you have your, your loop. But I'll tell you, these save your bacon big time. Because then you don't have to fiddle and around with doing it that way. Okay. So now, I have to find my angel that I did. <laughs> there we go. All right. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to take your jump ring. Okay. And you're going to take your pliers and this is where that other tool comes in really handy but you don't have to have it you're going to take you're going to see that little cut right in there that's where you're going to open up your jump ring okay and you just use your nail that's all you need to do you put it on your bead. Okay. Then you take your wire 
and you fit this through the bead or through the wire so it's in between those two loops that you made okay and then you just bend the um, jump ring back to close it now make sure that when you do this you might hear a little snap and that means it's closed okay now if you have a pair of um, flat nose pliers I'll just use these if you have a little pair of flat nose pliers this would be a good time to use them just to um, flatten that out a little bit if it's bulging up at all because you don't want there to be any snagging on here okay and that's it there is your progress keeper Ta-da! okay and then you can go and do that with all of these. Like you can pre-do these. You can you make you make these and then you can make your dangles and then you just put them together. You can have a little assembly line. Right? Okay, now if you're making a um, stitch marker, you're gonna do the same thing with your whatever stone or bead whatever you're going to be using you do the exact same process and then you have that aside okay i'll make another one just for the sake of it Oop. i've got a couple of little hematite beads i'm going to use one of those Okay, take your head pin, put your bead on, put your other bead on, take your tool, put it in there, squeeze it. Now you see, this is, this is what I mean, it's not closed. So you have to go back in and you have to, you know, make sure that it's closed. Because you don't want it falling off. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now, all you're going to do is you're going to take a jump ring. See how that, that's a little hard to pick up? That's when this tool comes in really handy. Okay, you're going to open up your jump ring. Pop on your bead onto your jump ring. Then you're going to take your lever back. Your lever back has a little loop on it. Then you're going to put the lever back on the loop. Like that. And then you're just going to close the loop. Okay. And that's it. There is your stitch marker. There you go. And that's that. Easy peasy. Takes a little getting used to. Um, if you've never worked with wire before or you've never uh, used the tools before. But once you get used to it, you know, you can make these like crazy. You can just, but I really suggest this, if you're going to make stuff on a regular basis or you're planning on selling your stitch markers this tool is an invaluable tool it is a little pricey it's anywhere between 30 and 40 dollars um, 
but you know what this will save you this will save a lot of time it will save a lot of grief uh, it will save your wrists and uh, you won't be cussing and swearing because you've you know messed up a wire or <laughs> you know anything like that so that's 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 it that's it look at these aren't they pretty easy 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 all right okay guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you have any questions please contact me at crochetacanada at gmail.com or leave a, a message down in the the description box of this video i do read all of my messages Okay, so thanks for joining me, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye!